Odessa and Big Spring. This is ABC Big 2 News at 1130. Developing now at 1130, the fallout from that bombshell ruling by a federal judge striking down the nationwide mask mandates for planes and public transport. The Justice Department is now considering an appeal. Good morning, everyone. I'm Samantha Smrachniak. And I'm Matt Fonce. The confusion continues with different rules for planes, airports, the subway, and passengers faced with making their own choices. ABC's Gio Benitez has the latest. This morning, so many travelers across the country tossing the masks. I think it's wonderful. In fact, I'm ecstatic. But now the Department of Justice saying not so fast, confirming it will appeal a federal judge's ruling to strike down the mask mandate if the CDC believes that mandate is still necessary. The CDC saying overnight that it recommends masks during travel and that it will assess the need for a mask requirement. In the meantime, passengers left to weigh the risks. Are you going to wear a mask on the plane or are you going to keep it off? I'm probably going to keep it off, but just kind of check things out. If someone's coughing, maybe I'll put it off. Otherwise, I'll keep it off. All right, so it's situational for you. Right. But there's major confusion, especially in New York. You can fly without a mask in and out of New York's LaGuardia and Kennedy airports, but you'll need to put it on while walking through the airport. There are two of only three airports in the country requiring masks, including Philadelphia. Uber and Lyft also lifting that mask mandate, and some parents whose children aren't eligible for a vaccine also concerned. My wife who's pregnant and my four-year-old daughter who's not yet old enough to be vaccinated flew out to California thinking that the mask mandates would be in effect on both legs of our trips, and halfway through it's going to be a different situation and now infection rates climbing across 33 states and territories driven by the new omicron subvariant ba2121 which could be about 25 percent more contagious than ba2 but even with the confusion and concern excitement is high for the spring and summer travel season airline stocks soaring upon news of the mandate being lifted so this morning, the question, what if that mask mandate is reinstated? I can tell you, just looking around here at the airport, so many people are very happy to take that mask off. So really, enforcement could be a lot harder than the first time around. Gio Benitez, ABC News at Newark Liberty International Airport. And be, to sh be sure to follow this story as it develops on the Your Basin app. You can download it on the Apple App Store or Google Play. And now, your forecast first on ABC Big 2 News. All right, well, time now to send it over to meteorologist Ryan DePhillips with a check of the forecast. I will have to say this morning, I felt like I was back in Florida with the humidity, so the mugginess. Humid. And you saw, you said you had some, like, residue on your windshield. Yeah, my windshield was all foggy this Absolutely. morning. I had to use those windshield wipers. But it is interesting how much the weather can change yeah. from the morning to this mm -hmm. afternoon, Ryan. That's certainly been the case. I think that's going to be the trend over the next few mornings. Humid mornings, dry afternoons. As those westerly winds really pick up, we're going to be seeing drier air and really mostly sunny skies today, but we do notice that we have some clouds still lingering on in. And some of these clouds earlier this morning were producing, yeah, very misty and foggy conditions. It was a mild start. Temperature got down to 60 degrees, warming up to 96 degrees. That daily record high temperature originally was 93 degrees back in 1964. We're likely to break that today, and we're going to be about 10 to 15 degrees above normal here in the tall city. And over the next couple of days, really some chances of rain, but later on Friday, we could be seeing some storms, especially Friday and Saturday, we could be seeing some storms as we do notice that chances of rain really start to pick up. I do think even places like Fork Stockton could be seeing some rain in nearby the Midland and Odessa area. And I'll eventually be tracking cooler weather as well. Back to you guys. Thank you, Ryan. And this morning, firefighters are working con to contain two fires in Arizona, but dry, windy conditions are making the job tough. The tunnel fire has grown to more than 6,000 acres near Flagstaff. It first sparked on Sunday, and since then, it's destroyed nearly two dozen structures and threatened hundreds more. Multiple communities in the surrounding area are currently under evacuation orders. Also this morning, we're following the devastating floods in South Africa. Hundreds are dead and at least 40,000 are homeless. 10,000 troops are now deployed there as the massive recovery effort gets underway. This region hasn't seen rain like this in more than 60 years. Houses were formerly there and right now what you see down here is the furniture, it's the cars, it's the entire house, all the houses that have just literally just slid down the bank and it's now in a pile. Right, just a heap of 
memories, I guess. South Africa's president says natural disasters like these are only a sign of what's to come as climate change continues to worsen around the globe. Developing now on ABC Big 2 News. Also developing this morning, police are investigating a shooting at the Peruvian ambassador's residence in Washington, D.C. Around 8 this morning, Secret Service officers shot and killed an intruder who broke into the residence. After smashing several windows, he was also holding a metal stake. The D.C. police chief said the officers tried to subdue the man with tasers but were unsuccessful. The officers fired those tasers. Uh, they, they, they did not take effect, and as these uh, weapons did not take effect, ultimately the officers end up pulling their service weapons, firing shots, and this person is now deceased. The incident is under investigation, and police are trying to determine who the intruder was. And now to growing outrage over the video of a police officer in Syracuse, New York, putting a crying eight-year-old boy in the back of a cruiser. This after the boy was reportedly accused of stealing a bag of chips. ABC's TJ Holmes has the story. Millions of people online have seen what is y'all doing? And are reacting to this video of an eight-year-old child stopped by Syracuse police. He's stealing stuff. If he breaks into your house, he steals something. Nah, man, what is y'all, a bag of chips? The boy screaming and sobbing while being placed in the back of a police cruiser by three officers after they say he stole a bag of chips from a local store. What is y'all doing? Yes, he ain't like a baby to me. Why you? Why you? That's what I'm doing. I don't know what you That's doing. You I just think you snatch him up off the. No. So what? So what's going on then? I if he stole some chicks, I'll pay for him. I'll pay for him. You don't even know where he lived. Kenneth Jackson recorded the incident and spoke with GMA overnight. I had to because at that moment I, I'm looking around and there, there's no one out there besides myself at the time. A more audience was starting to gather, but no one was actually intervening. It was his video that prompted a passionate online debate. What are you doing to that young boy? About what the appropriate course of action should be in this situation. Hey, I'll walk him home. How about that? We'll walk him home. We have a policing problem when it comes to police in the community. And clearly, as the world can see, there's a big, big, big disconnect. In a statement, the Syracuse mayor says the body camera footage demonstrates no handcuffs were used by officers at any time. It goes on to say what occurred demonstrates the continuing need for the city to provide support to our children and families and to invest in alternative response options to assist our officers. Call your sergeant. Call your sergeant. Call your sergeant, man. The officers later dropped off the young boy to his father, who at the time said the officers were friendly. But after seeing the video, wants to file a complaint with police. Syracuse police said the incident is under investigation and they can not comment. Now developing here locally, police are learning new details in the death of Sean McCracken. Odessa police say the shooter, Isaiah Renteria, confessed to the murder. After being questioned, he said he shot McCracken after a fight and then ran away to call 911. He also says the man punched him in the face several times. Now Renteria has been charged with murder. And in Midland, a police officer and his wife have been charged with hindering the apprehension of a known felon. Court documents say that the officer, Jake Salas, overheard that officers were after a wanted man accused of evading arrest. That man was his wife's brother. Salas called his wife and told her that her brother was wanted by police. They are behind bars now, but we don't know about a bond being set. Police in Odessa are investigating a drive-by shooting that happened near 50th Street. OPD says it was on the way to a house when they were told about 20 shots were fired outside. Police say they did find several shell casings around the home. While investigating, police also say two vehicles had several bullet holes and broken glass in and around them. One close-by neighbor heard the shots and went to check his home security cameras and was shocked by what he heard and saw. We were just there in the bedroom and uh, getting ready to go to bed and just heard some gunshots. We both looked at each other and, and they just kept going and going and going and and they finally stopped. And then I called 911 and said, I heard gunshots right here close by. They sounded like they were right outside our window, but they were about a block away. And then and then I, I got on my camera, just checked, make sure there was no one outside my house and then um, and then, that, but that's when it detected the audio, the loud audio. OPD says several bullets also went into the home, but as of right now, police say no one was injured in the shooting.
Now, if you heard the shots or know anything about the case, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. You can also leave a tip anonymously through the app. And to follow all of the latest news across the nation and right here in the basin, you can head over to yourbasin.com. Well, this morning, a brutal report from Netflix saying it's lost subscribers for the first time in a decade, and it's lost 200,000 so far this year. This news could lead to big changes for the streaming giant and its viewers. ABC's Will Reeve has the story. This morning, Netflix and Cell? The streaming giant down 25% on Wall Street in after-hours trading after announcing its first quarterly subscriber loss in over a decade. Netflix saying more than 200,000 subscribers left the service in the first three months of the year. The expectation was that Netflix was going to have a bad quarter in terms of subscriber growth, but it was even worse than what anyone was expecting. Netflix is home to shows like Squid Game. Bridgerton. You were the bane of my existence and the object of all my desires. And the upcoming penultimate season of Stranger Things. See you on the other side. On the other side. But even these hits may not be enough to fend off stiff competition from other streaming services. There are just so many players out there right now. And before this, Netflix was really the primary player. It had the biggest reach globally, but of course that is being threatened right now. And now observers are asking if viewers will have to binge watch their favorite Netflix show with ads in between. It's something CEO Reed Hastings hasn't ruled out. Allowing consumers who would like to have a lower price and are advertising tolerant um, get what they want makes a lot of sense. So that's something we're looking at now. Now, Netflix also indicated it's serious this time about cracking down on password sharing. The company estimates 30 million households in North America used shared accounts. Yeah, that's hundreds of millions of dollars a month in lost revenue. Experts warn customers in the U.S. and Canada sharing accounts could soon pay a premium to do so. Well, your first class packages might take a little longer to get to their destination. The USPS is slowing down on delivery speeds for first class packages. According to the agency, about 30% of first class packages will see an increase of an additional day or two. The Postal Service will also remove an additional day for priority mail sent via ground. These changes are set to begin on May 1st. Coming up at 11.30, looking to cut down on waste? Well, Earth Day is coming up, so it's the perfect time to do so. We'll share some easy tips to get you started. And temperatures started off in the 50s and 60s, warming up already in the 80s. 90s today near record high temperatures with dry and windy conditions sparking the threat of fire danger. A fire weather warning in effect till 1 a.m. local time tonight and a high wind warning for the Guadalupe Mountains. While the temperatures will be way above normal over the next couple of days, cooler weather with stormy conditions may be on their way. Weekdays at 5, 6, and 10 p.m. with Chief Meteorologist Chase Menendez. When you need electrical repairs or installations for your home or business, Corey Sly Electrical Service is the number one choice in the Permian Basin. You can trust that our electricians will handle the job safely and professionally. Our customers recommend us because we are dependable. Our electricians are licensed, have many years of experience, and provide upfront pricing on every job. Corey Sly Electrical Service is ready 24-7 for all your electrical needs. Call us today. Distracted driving can happen to anyone, anytime. Eating, doing your makeup, and the number one culprit, texting and driving. Did you know that texting and driving is six times deadlier than driving under the influence of alcohol? If you've been injured in a wreck from distracted driving, call HQ Chiropractic anytime, 24-7. HQ Chiropractic will get you the help you need when you need it. Spokespersons for Robert White. You get hurt in a car wreck and you need a lawyer. How much is it going to cost you to hire Robert White? Absolutely nothing. 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 It costs you absolutely nothing up front to hire me. I don't get paid unless you get paid. One of my clients was in a car wreck and injured his shoulder. I got him $107,666. That's in his pocket. If you've been hurt in a car wreck, call me. It's just that easy. Call attorney Robert White right now. Call 580-5421. 
Your debit card is always with you, which means it can be easy to lose, and that's never a good feeling. But with Card Valet from MTCU, turning your card off is as easy as a swipe, just in case you can't find it. And with MTCU's mobile app, starting a budget has never been easier. A few clicks and you can view your monthly spending habits. Card Valet and mobile budgeting. Just a couple of benefits of mobile banking with MTCU. Your partner in lending, your partner in life. I was driving through that intersection and a car ran a red light and hit me. I'm attorney Ted Lyon. If you got injured in a wreck, we can help. Hurt in a car wreck and need money? Call Long Car Lion Jenkins, the strong arm. I was hurt bad, and the insurance company was trying to lowball me. Let us deal with the insurance company so you don't have to. Long Car Lion Jenkins fought for me and got me over $200,000. Call the strong arm. We'll fight to get you the money you deserve. 800 then all sevens. <laughs> Your local weather authority forecast. Mostly sunny across the region. A lot of look at the tall city. We do see, again, some very thin clouds, but really generally it is mostly sunny out there. These clouds certainly not producing any rainfall. As this morning, it was a little foggy here in the basin with really high humidity values, but drying out as we speak. And as those conditions dry out, those temperatures may soar near record territory today. Hot conditions still for tomorrow, but higher chances of storms as we head into Friday and Saturday. And speaking of those storms, we saw some pop up and moved off to our south and east late yesterday morning and early in the afternoon with clouds beginning to sag on into the south, not affecting us too much. But again, we have very very thin, lingering clouds right now. As earlier, you see these darker shadings, low clouds, now these higher White clouds are thinner clouds, but certainly not producing, again, any rainfall right now because we have drying conditions, those westerly winds taking hold. And as those winds pick up, we could be seeing fire weather. A fire weather warning in effect until 1 a.m. local time for extreme to critical fire weather conditions for a majority of the basin. And speaking of those winds, gusting more than 60 miles per hour in the Guadalupe Mountains where there's a high wind warning in effect till 8 p.m. local time. Those winds already picking up around 25 to 35 miles per hour from the west in the northern and western basin. We still have a little bit of those southerly winds in the far eastern basin but already here in the tall city, southwesterly winds taking hold, transitioning mostly to west-southwesterly winds, really drying out the lower levels of the atmosphere. And that's going to really provide the spark, the potential for spark for wildfires. So that's something that we got to watch out for this afternoon. And then those winds switch back a little bit more from the south as we head later this evening. Some more humid conditions over the next few overnights and morning hours. But during the day, very dry. Yeah, and very warm, 96 degrees this afternoon. Daily record high temperature originally in 1964 at 93 degrees. We are likely to break that. 82 degrees is our, is our average high. Again, we're gonna be way above that for this time of year. Already in the low to mid 80s in many locations, mid to upper 90s widespread across the region, mid to upper 80s in the higher elevations before cooling back down tonight in the 50s and 60s. Humid in the lower levels of the atmosphere, but dry in the upper levels with clear skies, low temperature 65 degrees, and those winds, again, transitioning more from the south at 10 to 20 miles per hour. And another very warm day tomorrow, 95 degrees, low temperature at 65 degrees, blowing dust, limiting visibility at times because of the breezy conditions and yet dry conditions during the afternoon. Fire conditions expected also for tomorrow. So that's gonna be the trend, not just for today, but also for tomorrow, way above normal temperatures over the next couple of days, but cooling down just a little bit on Friday and Saturday in the mid to upper 80s and lower 90s with higher chances of much needed rainfall in the form of thunderstorms. All right, well, the countdown to Earth Day is on, and it's time to get ready for some trash talk with the social media influencers taking on the zero waste movement. The U.S. produces more trash than any other nation, and these influencers are sharing simple tips we can all use to cut down on waste. ABC's Robin Roberts has more. Three zero waste ways to use banana peels. From food. One of my favorite food waste tips is to create an eat first box. To fashion. Hey, it's me, Daniel, and I'm turning this stuff into this stuff. 
and it's everyday items. My favorite zero waste kitchen items. These are some of the social media influencers taking on the zero waste movement, encouraging their followers to rethink their trash. The hashtag hitting over 2 billion views on TikTok. Here is what I got from last night's trash walk. The average American discarding up to 4.9 pounds of trash per day. When we generate all this waste and it accumulates in landfills, that trash decomposes and it produces gases like methane gas, which is a very potent greenhouse gas. Consumer culture really tells us there's one way to live. It's buying so much, it's buying single use, not making trash in the first place, not making anything that needs to be recovered or landfilled should be the goal. Environmental activist Lauren Singer suggesting a trash audit. One of the biggest things that you'll see in your trash most likely is food waste. Composting is one of the most important and biggest steps that an individual can take. Besides that, you'll see items like textiles, personal and beauty care, item. Since 2017, Lauren offering more sustainable options for everyday goods at her package-free shop. I tried to go one day without using plastic and yeah. I failed. In 2019, Ashley Renee Insanwu went from travel influencer to environmental content creator. Composted. And says a zero-waste lifestyle doesn't have to impact your wallet. Long before the modern zero waste movement started, many cultures around the world pretty much had no choice but to live sustainable lifestyles. Now it's like it's taking a, a very big shift in our mindsets to kind of unlearn all of these wasteful habits. Ashley helping her followers shift from a disposable mindset to a reusable one. This aluminum can right here, this is from an old can of beans. When you use what you already have at home, that is like the most sustainable thing that you can do. Some great tips there. Yeah, it is crazy how easy it is to be sustainable, no, but right? we don't always take the time to think about those things. A lot things. of people, you think it's so hard to mm -hmm. be green, eat healthy, do all these yeah. types of things for the environment, but it's really not that difficult. Yeah, exactly. Now, ahead of Earth Day on Friday, Meta, the parent company of Instagram and Facebook, is expanding its fundraising options within the apps. Yeah, there are more than one and a half million nonprofit organizations with profiles on those platforms, including some advocating for climate change. Now, organizations will be able to attach the donation button to their reels in both the apps. Meta says it will pay the processing price for the nonprofit and give them all of their donations free of charge. So something definitely to take advantage yeah, sure. on, on this coming Earth Day. Well, coming up on ABC Big 2 News at 11.30, a new payment technology is coming to Whole Foods in Austin. How your hands could replace your credit cards. And as we head to break, a reminder that if you see news happening, share your videos and photos on social media with us. And we want to see your birthday celebrations. Submit content on social media using the hashtag ABCBig2News or go to yourbasin.com. We feature birthday photos on Good Morning Basin Fridays at 6 a.m. You can get your smile back today. At Affordable Dentures and Implants, we make high-quality tooth replacement affordable for everyone. So whether it's a single tooth, full dentures, or life-changing dental implants, we have an experienced dentist who can help you go ahead and smile. Click or call to schedule your new smile consultation today. Go ahead and smile. Spokesperson for Robert White. You get in a car wreck and you're hurt. What does it cost to hire attorney Robert White? Absolutely nothing. Nothing? Nothing. It costs you absolutely nothing up front to hire me. I don't get paid unless you get paid. It's just that easy. For 50 years, you've been our friends and family. So for four days, I've set the lowest prices on the largest in-stock selection of mattresses and furniture. Like this Mitchell sofa and love seat with the matching throw pillows. Normally $2,400. Now just $1,996. You'll even have a chance to spin and win furniture free. Or win your entire purchase free. Friends and family, this weekend only at Bob Mills. In 1947, DQ made the first soft-serve cone in Texas. 75 years later, you're still enjoying it. To say thanks, we're celebrating with 75-cent cones across Texas. Stop by your local DQ for a small cone, original or dipped, for just 75 cents. From the iconic curl to the crunchy chocolate shell, we love making the treats that make you smile. Celebrate with us today. DQ, that's what I like about Texas. 
Seems like everything is smarter these days. Watches, vacuums, even refrigerators. So why not a smarter electricity plan? Like Reliant Truly Free Flex Days. You get your two highest use days free every week, up to eight free days every month. Now powered by 100% solar energy. Plus, you can track your free electricity with the Reliant app. Call 1-866-RELIANT and switch to the Truly Free Flex Days plan. Reliant, that's power. Your way. Reynolds Wrap makes this whole cooking and cleanup thing so easy. It speeds up this so I can get to them. Easy prep, cook and clean with Reynolds Wrap. Watch ABC Big 2 News weeknights at 5, 6, and 10. A Texas-based company is bought for billions. Yeah, and Exxon Mobil says carbon capture will be a $4 trillion business. Jane King is at the NASDAQ with those stories and more in today's Texas Business Report. Exxon Mobil estimates there will be a $4 trillion market by 2050 for capturing carbon dioxide and storing it underground. That's about 60% of the $6.5 trillion market that the U.S.'s largest crude producer estimates for oil and gas by then. Well, one investment firm placing a big bet on campus housing, a move that means they believe on-campus learning isn't going away. Blackstone is paying $13 billion for Texas-based American campus communities, which owns homes on and near college campuses. Well, Whole Foods stores in Austin will get Amazon's palm paying technology. You just wave your hand to pay for groceries. This speeds up the checkout process as customers can avoid searching for their payment methods. And distracted driving deaths in Texas increased 17% last year compared to 2020, claiming the lives of 431 people. Texas Department of Transportation is conducting its annual Talk Tech Crash Campaign during the National Distracted Driving Awareness Month in order to urge Texans to keep their heads up but put the phones down and drive. From the NASDAQ Market Site, I'm Jane King with your Texas Business Report. Filling our cars, our homes, and our local economy, gas, oil, and electricity are all powering the Permian. I'm Matt Fons. Watch my reports every Wednesday night at 6 and 10. Watch Powering the Permian every Wednesday night on ABC Big 2 News. The NHL on ABC. Sponsored locally by the Odessa Jackalopes. Suffering with chronic pain? Told a costly surgery with weeks of downtime is your only option? Integrated Pain Associates is your source for pain relief and now serving the Permian Basin. The physicians at IPA believe you shouldn't suffer in pain. They've provided thousands of patients long-lasting solutions with the use of state-of-the-art, minimally invasive technology to restore function and mobility. Schedule your free MRI review today. Your journey to a pain-free life starts at IPA. You want to feel important. You want to be a part of something bigger. Something that matters and can help change things. You want to feel like you belong. We know. We felt that way too. And that's why we did something about it. We are just Army National Guard soldiers. We are normal people just like you. And together, we can make a difference. Take on your legacy. Visit NationalGuard.com to find out more. I was driving through that intersection, and a car ran a red light and hit me. I'm attorney Ted Lyon. If you got injured in a wreck, we could help. Hurt in a car wreck and need money? Call Long Car Lion Jenkins, the strong arm. I was hurt bad, and the insurance company was trying to lowball me. Let us deal with the insurance company so you don't have to. Long Car Lion Jenkins fought for me and got me over $200,000. Call the strong arm. We'll fight to get you the money you deserve. 800 and all sevens. Temperatures warming up into the 90s today, likely to break a daily record high temperature here in the Tulsa City. Very hot tomorrow, mostly sunny. Another chance of rain, though, as we head into Friday and Saturday. A little bit cooler with windy conditions, cooling off a lot more on Sunday and by next week. 
Thank you, Ryan. Well, check this out. This kebab is out of the world, quite literally. Oh, a restaurant owner in Turkey marked the 61st anniversary of the first manned space flight by attempting to launch a spicy kebab, of all here? things, into space. After loading the kebab onto a styrofoam tray, the package was lifted by a helium balloon with a tracker on it. It flew for three hours, but the balloon ended up eventually bursting, setting the kebab into the ocean. But hey, it was okay. still found intact. So how I take they, that as a win. How do they have it strapped on there like that? What I was, was trying to look at what the contraption was there. The things people do. I mean, cool story. I guess good way to celebrate, you know, space okay. exploration. Absolutely. <laughs> Have a great day, everyone. We'll see you back here tomorrow.